Cyber Friends, it's the Midi Man, coming back at you from Walker's Music. We got another word for the day. We're going to continue on with the Ignorant Brethren series. This is should be part five, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Midi Man want to give God all the glory, give him all the praise for life, health, and strength for as well as it is. And we hope that uh, each and every one of you, all the Cyber Friends, that are, we hope that your day is going good and your week have started off on the right foot. Uh, matter of fact, we just want you to give God the praise, give him all the glory, because it is he that has allowed us to be here one more time. So we want to just go on and get right into the meat of the matter and uh, in the Ignorant Brethren series. And like I said, people, this the Ignorant Brethren series is not to pick on anybody, nor to belittle anyone, because we all are ignorant in certain areas, because we don't know everything. And like I say, I want to reemphasize this. Ignorant just means that you're not informed. You don't know. And all of us are ignorant in certain areas. We all are. But we don't have to stay that way. And this is what the Apostle Paul was talking about when he was talking to the, especially those of the circumcision. He, uh, the, 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 the Jewish brethren and his Jewish brethren, he was trying to let them know that they, can't, they couldn't impose this law. On the Gentiles, because it wasn't the law was not given to them, and he even went as far as to say that by nature they do things that we should be doing by law, but we don't even keep it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm I'm just paraphrasing that now, but I, I want everybody to see why we should not keep on talking about the law. The law was a schoolmaster to lead us and to show us that we needed to save the people. That's what the law was for. We couldn't keep the law. We couldn't keep the law. Matter of fact, I was so glad when I saw Brother JT. He did. I just saw a video, I believe, last night or something. We were talking about Moses. And, uh, and I was so glad to see that because I knew that was my, my next step was coming from that angle. And I was glad to see that he had mentioned something about Moses, about being about missing the promised land and everything. And God knows. I mean, that was sad that Moses missed the promised land. But let me tell you why he missed it, too. Anytime you got to deal with us, you got to be careful because we will get you so mad and upset. See, Moses missed the promised land because of he disobeyed God. He let the people got to him. Now, are we going to start talking about Moses? Of course not. Because people will get to you if you let them. People will get on your last nerve. And those people, all they did was complain and murmur and bitch and crave. You know that. We all know that. They did that. Moses got upset, he got angry, got tired of him always complaining. And God told him, listen carefully, to speak to the rock. Moses struck it out of anger. See, God gets glory out of everything. And if God don't get the glory, guess what? It's nothing. God will not share his glory with anybody. When we get to thinking that we are doing something, people, see, in other words, by Moses' act of striking the rock. It was letting the people thought that Moses was doing this here, not God. God didn't like that. And that was some other details too that God didn't like that Moses did about the waters of strife. And that's in the Bible. You can read that for yourself. Those were some of the couple of reasons why Moses uh, didn't enter the promised land. But we're going back now to the ignorant brother in series. You don't have to stay ignorant. In other words, all of it's in the Bible, but we, for some reason, we want to read what we want to read and we want to interpret the way we want to interpret. The Bible interprets itself. The ignorant brother in court in Paul, when it came down today, and I want to talk about this here, because like I said, ain't no sense of this to keep standing up under the law. We are not under the law, people. Believe it. Jesus brought in a better deal. Why do you think they call it the New Covenant or the New Testament? If that old had been all right, there wouldn't have been no need for a new. Was the old bad? No, of course not. It came from God. It was good. We were bad. That's what I want to get everybody to see. It's, it's, it seems to the soul that we cannot fathom in our little old mind or just accept the simple belief in Christ frees us from the yoke of sin. The strength of the law is sin, people. In other words, if there is no law, there can be no transgression. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? Now, just, let's go back to the garden. 
Let's go back to the garden. Why did, why didn't Satan, and matter of fact, I heard somebody else say this here, and I, I wished I knew the person that said this so I could give them credit, but it was the truth. Why didn't Satan tempt Eve to just kill Adam instead of having him to eat from the fruit, from the tree? All right, I'm waiting. Think about it. There was no law. There was no law about killing. You can't tempt people when there is no law. The only law that was present at that time was what? Do not eat from this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That was the only thing, the only law. That was the only thing that God had placed in commandment that you shouldn't do. Satan could only tempt what he had said not to do. In other words, you cannot, you cannot penalize many man for walking on your grass if you don't have a sign there. But if you have a sign that it said do not walk on the grass, then if many man walks on the grass, then many man is a transgressor. But if you don't have a sign there, I'm, how can I transgress when there's no law? There's no guideline. See, the, the law was a guide. It was a schoolmaster leading us to where we are. When Christ came, that was the end of the law, people. That was the end of the law. When Christ came, that was the end of the law. Please, let's, why don't we just forget that? Now, when it came to the time for Christ to depart, it's for the ignorant brethren. You got a lot of people that say, well, you know, we got, you got to be careful about taking communion. And I've seen a lot of people, they, when it's come time to take the Lord's Supper, they get up and leave out the church. And I'm like, wow, that, show, that tells me that you don't belong to Christ. People, don't be ignorant. If you do not partake, if you do not partake in the Lord's Supper, you don't belong to him. That is, people been taught wrong for so long, including myself. I always thought, no, well, I can't take the Lord's Supper because I got sin in my life. Well, if that be the case, then can't nobody take it. There's not one person alive today that ain't got some wrong in their life. I know you may think, I know, I know that we've been in a Christian for so long and we think we squeaky clean. But ah, uh, no, 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 people. We got some issues, all of us. That Jesus, if Jesus paid the price for it, we're not subject, we're not a prisoner of sin anymore. We're not a prisoner. But people, come on now. Come on. Don't make God out of a lie. You can't do it anyway. If Jesus, if we could keep things to the letter, Jesus died for nothing. Oh no, people. We're always going to be dealing with some issues. Jesus told the man, the rich young ruler, Remember, he came to Jesus and said, okay, I got this thing. I got it. I got it whooped. He said, I don't know all these commandments I kept from my youth. He wanted to both. Jesus, yeah, but I love you. But one thing you like, go sell what you have. Give to the poor. Take up the cross and follow me. He went away sorrowful. Well, he just broke the first commandment. Don't have no other gods before God. His money was his God. So you see, <laughs> come on, people. Come on, come on. Then, you know, we got some of us say, well, I didn't, I don't commit adultery. I didn't commit adultery, Lord. No, that earnest did. Many man did. He committed adultery. Yeah, many man did. Sure did. Then Jesus looked at him and said, okay, well, all right. You didn't commit adultery. Okay. How many of you ever looked on a woman? Twice. Y'all know we got some good looking women out there. Come on now, brothers. Come on. Let's be for real. You got some good looking sisters out there. Good looking women. God made them that way for a reason. They are good looking. When you find a good looking woman, she's a good looking woman. No no sin in the good look. No, no. Matter of fact, who wants something that don't look not attractive? I don't. But, the, but what did Jesus say? If you look on them with the wrong motive in your heart, you've already committed adultery. Well, that about got us all, didn't it? Because all of us have done that. I'm not here to argue with scripture. Jesus, every time people tried to get big britch about the law, about what they good, they were keeping. Jesus always showed them, he enlightened them what the real law was, the fulfillment of the law. Jesus is the only one. Thank God for Jesus. So therefore now, now that many man knows that there's nothing good in him, now I can look toward the cross. 
and accept and believe what Jesus done for me. Now that's what makes me righteous. Not the law, but what Jesus done. That's what makes us righteous. So when we go back to the Lord's Supper, we haven't heard that. Well, you don't supposed to take this because of where well, you got sin. Well, if that be the case, nobody could drink the water, I mean the wine, or eat, the, eat of the bread. That's not what Jesus said, people. Jesus told the boys around the table on that night before he suffered. He said, the bread, he took it. He said, this is my body, which is going to be broken for you. He said, take, eat, y'all of it. This do in remembrance of me. Now, the cup, which is the fruit of the vine, the wine, fermented or unfermented. We got arguments about that. That's beside the point. I don't care what it was. But Jesus said, this you do. This is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you. He said, drink ye all of it. This you do in remembrance of me. As often as you do this, you show forth my death and suffering till I come again. So people... When you got people telling you that you uh, we only do communion once a month or twice a year, nah, hogwash, that's baloney. Jesus said do it as many times as often as you would because you are celebrating, you are, you are remembering what I've done for you. So when we take the Lord's Supper, people, we are taking, we are remembering why Jesus died, why he lived, why he died, and why he rose again. He died for your healing. He, 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 he was bruised. Go back to Isaiah 53. That's what it does. That's what that, that's what that communion means. Your healing is in that communion. Your well-being is in that communion. Your financial uh, well-being is in that communion. Jesus said, this do ye in remembrance of me. And it doesn't, when they went, the early disciples, they went from house to house, daily breaking bread. You can do that same thing. Matter of fact, many men at one time, and many men got to go back doing it. At one time, I did it on a regular basis, right here in my own home. Holy Communion. I don't know why people think that you got to have a minister to minister that to you. You are a believer. We are supposed to take part. We were commanded to do it. Don't let anybody tell you you can't take part in communion. If you are born again, you can take part in Holy Communion. If you belong to Christ, you can take it. Stop worrying about that false teaching about you need, if you got sin in your life, well, just confess it. Confess it. Just like you did when you came to Christ. You confessed that you was a sinner. God came in and lived and abided with you. He saved you from your sin. Just by confession. What does it say in Romans 10? If we confess with your mouth. So if you leaving out the church service or not taking communion in your home because of the fact you talking about you got unresolved sin, unconfessed sin. Well, just confess them. Well, bro, Pastor, you know, I know I'm not living right, bro, Pastor. Well, stop living wrong then. Stop it. Just repent. Use your mouth, people. The ignorant brother in part five. People, we got to learn the Bible interprets itself. It's right there. Read it. You don't need many man. You don't need nobody. You don't need Benny Hinn and nobody else. You don't need them to tell you. It's right there in your Bible. And read it. Ask the Holy Spirit, which is our teacher. Leech into all truth. And matter of fact, by all means prayer. By all means prayer. People, many man gonna say this this morning on a soft note. I do believe with all my heart that Jesus is coming soon. And he's coming for his church. He's coming for his believers. We are gonna go through some things. I do believe that. And I'm not here to argue with anybody on what you believe. Whether pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. I don't know, people. All I know is what I've read. And what I'm convinced of. But you know what? If Jesus comes and gets us before all of this, so be it. Thank God. But if he doesn't, many men just want to be ready to go through and to deal with whatever he has to deal with in order to meet my Savior. One day. Now whether it be pre, mid, or post. Doesn't matter with many man. All many man want to do. And all many man pray for each and every one of you. Is to be ready to go with them whenever he comes back. Because according to the scripture. Jesus said when I come my reward is with me. And wherever you are that's where you're going to stay. That's according to the book of Revelation. He said let him that is unjust. Be unjust still. 
Now, I want y'all to read that and tell me that it, that don't mean that. Well, you'll just be talking to yourself because I read it and I believe what it says. Him that is unjust, let him be unjust still. So, in other words, the time to accept Christ is right now. If you had not done that, then you need to pray the prayer. Ask Jesus into your life to be your Savior. It's not about what you can do. You can't do anything. But he has done it all for you. All you have to do is confess and acknowledge that you've been wrong and that you need a Savior. Ask Jesus to come and live in your heart and to forgive you of your sin. And you will be saved. It's just that simple. I guess that's like, it's so simple until I guess that I come a lot of us miss it. Especially us educated folks. We got to make things so complicated. So we can get our little calculators and our little trigonometry pens and figure it all out. No people. It's not. It's real simple. Jesus is the one. Jesus is the way. When you confess and acknowledge that you need him. And we need him people. Ask him to come into your heart. Forgive you of your sin. You repent, turn, then stop walking that way. Turn, pick up your cross on a daily basis. If you fall, get back up. The Holy Spirit, he's the one that got us sealed to the day of redemption. If you confess, Jesus said, him that come to me, I will in no wise cast out. If you come to him, he's going to receive you. Are you going to have it all worked out that same day? Huh, I doubt it. I'm not saying you can't, because God can do anything. With God, anything is, anything is possible. There's nothing impossible with God. But I'm saying growth is a period of time, process. It's a process. You're not going to get on this Christian journey today and automatically be doing, you don't jump up a ladder. You don't jump up a ladder, you climb it. But nevertheless, when you get on board with Christ, one thing about it, you're on board. So if you accept him today, you say today. Is it, no, no. Once you confess him today, you are saved right now. But you got to you got to confess and you got to acknowledge that you've been wrong and that you need a savior. And then you invite him, ask him to come into your heart, and you shall. That's what the Book of Romans tells us. We shall be saved. This submitted man saying, "Whatever you get, whatever you get into, ignorant brethren. If God is not in it, please come out of it." This is Midi Man. Till the next time. Peace.